Oh, kia ora koutou. <coughs> um, I guess like everyone else, five minutes is yeah, quite difficult to try and um, serve any justice, but we'll give it a go. <coughs> um, the first question I'm often asked is you know, why consider Māori when it comes to digital data and AI? <coughs> so for those of you who are commercially driven, here's some quick facts. Um, the, the current Māori economy is worth $70 billion. Um, yet our, our Minister of Māori um, Development, Willie Jackson, um, believes that by 2030 the Māori economy will be worth about $100 billion just in assets. Uh, there's over 10,000 Māori businesses in New Zealand. And the most important fact for anyone who works in, um, with AI and in digital is you need relationships and trust with Māori and iwi. If you don't have that, you're not likely to be able to succeed very well. So, um, New Zealand has two constitutional documents which every New Zealand citizen should be um, familiar with and, um, and, and follow. The first one is um, He Whakaputanga, which was signed in 1835 between Māori and the Crown. Now, um, in, the, in the South Island here, we didn't sign He Whakaputanga, but um, tribes from Hamilton um, up the far north did sign He Whakaputanga. So that gave um, Māori and iwi um, basically sovereignty um, in a similar way that Te Tiriti did. And we have Te Tiriti or Waitangi, which was signed in 1840 with, by chiefs all around New Zealand. Um, now, there's also the English version called the Treaty of Waitangi. Um, the English version is not the version that Māori agreed to and signed. So whenever you're talking about um, uh, Te Tiriti, it has to be Te Tiriti or Waitangi, not the Treaty of Waitangi. Uh, that gives Māori um, sovereignty and it gives Māori sovereignty over anything of significant value, so i.e. data. Um, and so any Māori data is considered um, a taonga. And the Waitangi Tribunal um, two years ago um, made a, a decision that all Māori data that's not <coughs> anonymised is a taonga. So we've got some, um, immediately you've got to tiriti obligations when using data, Māori data. Uh, the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples um, was signed by most countries in 2007. In 2010, the New Zealand government um, ratified it, and this current government is making firm commitments to um, decide how this country can honour um, UNDRIP. So again, as anyone working in AI, this, these three um, documents are, uh, will be essential for, um, for your work. Um, just um, in October this year, the New Zealand Supreme Court uh, concluded that Māori law, L-O-R-E, is now um, part of New Zealand common law. So um, there's a huge amount of implications for all of New Zealand society, uh, more, but specifically for, um, for anyone who works in AI and works with Māori data, um, there, uh, there's a huge amount of Māori, L-O-R-E, that, that will be, um, need to be applied. So, uh, so if you have um, any AI that has Māori data, the Supreme Court ruling will be quite applicable. Um, we recently saw that um, Google had an um, AI that claimed to be sentient. Uh, from a Western perspective, you probably say, well, that's, that's not possible. Um, I mean, the theologists, people here may say something different. Um, but so in New Zealand, we have um, Sir Hedini Mead has created a, 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 what's called a tikanga test. It's a test of ethics. So if we apply the ethics test to an AI that calls itself sentient using Māori data, I argue that um, New, New Zealand legis legislation that grants personhood should be applicable and your AI could be, become um, a person under New Zealand law and under, um, under um, the Supreme Court ruling. It's, al it's also important to consider that from a Māori LORE point of view, if your AI has Māori data, Again, uh, from a, a LORE perspective, uh, it could be argued that your um, system is Māori. And I don't have an end page, but thank you.